Okay, I'm going to show you how to shade in the carapace of the shell. And I'm going to use an image that I have of my own turtle as reference um, to kind of get a feel for all the scoots and the textures that are in there. Okay, so one of the things with um, the texture or the growth lines is that there are sort of um, these little spots that they grow out from, these little plates that they grow out from, and you'll just sort of like add little lines. They kind of, they're almost like little ripples. And that's what you can do first to kind of get your bearings where the shading is going to behave and I'm just going to do the marginal scoots first And I'm just working in graphite for this tutorial. Um, I just feel it's a better way to learn shading and texture before you get into colored pencil. Um, and I want to do more of the black and white tutorials just to kind of um, give people more of a chance to learn to draw with a regular implement rather than you know, something more complicated like colored pencil because you have to lay down so many colors. And I started in this medium, so I think it's a good way to begin and then kind of grow out from there. And then once you start doing the uh, inner scoots, the growth plates of, uh, not the growth plates, but the original part where the scoot grows out from is going to start toward the bottom of the diamonds, at least the vertical, uh, the vertebral scoots. And as you go down, they just get a little bit bigger toward that area. And you can kind of see um, where they've grown out from where they were a baby or a little hatchling because it almost looks like those particular scoots have um, the baby scoots have sort of stayed in the middle and then they've just expanded out. Um,
and that's the general growth pattern. And then what you'll also have is you'll have a little bit of lines that sort of grow out like this. There's a couple different, um, there's a lot of angular lines that you see in the growth as well. It's almost, um, I guess it is uh, geometrical in some ways, the way that um, the scoots sort of start to shape um, as they grow and they develop all these sorts of angles on them and you can see the different lines and how they've been growing. And that is the general line set that you'll have when you go to do a turtle shell, at least in texture um, for this exercise. That's generally what you want to have. And um, I'll show you how to shade it in in just a moment. All right, I'm going to show you how to shade in the carapace of a turtle shell. And for right now, we're just, we're not focusing on patterns or colors just yet. We're just going to focus on sort of like the growth lines. And what you'll start doing first is you're going to shade um, the outer areas of the scoots first. Because the lightest areas are going to be right here where you have these little um, plates that they've grown out from. Uh, well, it's not really a plate, but it's the scoot that it's grown out from. That's the center point of the scoot that grows out. And you're just going to sort of shade in along some of the growth lines here. And then as you go inward, your color, your shade will be a little lighter. Because that's going to be your highlight in the scoot. And you can actually just go along the edges here. Another thing to do when you're shading in is um, you'll actually see lines between the scoots and there's like a little bit of white just on the edge. Um, those are actually the, um, actually some of the growth lines actually between the scoots that you'll side of your, so, I'm sorry, I can't talk. Uh, you'll see in some of the adult turtles as well as juveniles. So just keep those in mind. I am going to show you how to shade in the coloration and pattern of a, um, a slider turtle shell in just uh, after I finish this one because this is just to show you the texture and then I'll show you how to shade in the actual colors and bars 
just with pencil. Because I think this would be a good exercise just to kind of get a feel for how things are sort of lined up and how the textures play on light. Because doing it all at once is a bit difficult and I don't want to overwhelm anybody who's watching this. So we do one step at a time. And it's a lot easier to work in graphite because you can actually um, do everything you need to do with just one pencil. You don't have to switch around too much. But this is a really good... Um, it's just a good medium to get a feel for light and shadow and to even begin, you know, in any drawing. Um, a lot of people start with just your regular number two pencils and that was definitely how I started so I recommend it. Um, there are some people who even do it with charcoal. It's a little bit different to work with than graphite but it's also another professional medium to mess around with. Nice black and white medium. And again like we went over before um, this keel in the center just leave that blank because that is generally where light glints off of. So you're just going to leave that blank. And you're going to go along and just continue shading the scoots. And you can actually, when it comes to the growth lines, you don't have to shade in between them. What I would do is actually just shade on the line until you have some dev finish in there. And you have the little rings kind of around it that are highlighted. That's what I would do. And just remember, um, the darkest areas are going to be on the outer areas. That's where most of the darker shadows are going to fall. Um, and because of how they lay on top of each other, almost like scales do. So. They have a, not quite shadow, but it's just the way they kind of lay. And uh, they have a bit of angles, angular properties to them too. And that's something to take into account as well. And again, just shading lightly around the growth rings here. So you have that highlight in between them, so you can kind of tell they're there, but you know, not you're not blocking them out completely. And again, shade a little bit with the uh, the growth lines here. And again, there's a little bit of angular properties in here and right here on this particular scoot and uh, also this one too, you can kind of see a little bit of a glint of light. Um, that's part of where, they almost have these geometrical shapes in them, so just keep that in mind. Um, and even, even if you can, I would suggest uh, getting yourself a, um, you know, a couple photos of turtle shells. Um, ones that are just the bone too are, are good. 
and even um, ones that have been preserved with the scoots on them it's really a good um, item to have if you really want to learn all the textures and the shadow the shadows and light of um, a turtle shell just to kind of get you know something that you can work from life and uh, you can even you know use your own turtles if you have a pet turtle and and photograph their shell and start using those photos as reference and then if you're lucky enough to live near ponds and whatnot like I do you can get a couple of photos of them when they're basking if you're quick enough because they do jump in the water um, to really get you know the variance of shell shape and also um, texture and, and color and pattern because there's a great deal of variation between each individual and you could get a good sense of that when you look at wild wild animals I am actually going to finish this up um, you're going to follow the same sort of pattern with the marginal scoots um, I'm going to do a few of those and then I'm going to finish up shading this and then I will get to um, another version of this except we'll do the color pattern on it just in graphite but I'm going to do a few of the marginals just to show you it's the same general thing you're just going to outline and lightly shade the growth rings but it's the same general technique I'm using here as with the larger scoots and I'll finish this up and um, I'll show you the finished product with a photo and then I'll get to the plastron and doing the carapace with the pattern on it